Hello and good morning, welcome by the Orchid Saga in another video. I had a request, a request for uh, um, filming these uh, repots of these two guys. So I will do that and I will also uh, repot the other orchids. I have three more that need uh, repotting. Three new ones. Um, well, in totally five new ones, but I'm only going to film uh, unpotting these two guys. And uh, as you maybe uh, can see in the background, it's, it's quite dark still because I'm very early uh, filming this time. But um, yeah, so probably during this session the lights will uh, turn on. But um, yeah, like I said, I uh, wanted to film uh, at least these two guys. So let's start uh, on potting them and then uh, we will have a look at what's inside the pots. So I put on my gloves for you never know. Um, let's start with the... Uh, Beautiful sunset first. And it's loosely in the pot, but a bit wiggly, but it has quite a lot of I'm sorry, quite a lot of roots. Um, I think. So let's have a look. Media is falling off quite easily. So that's uh, handy in this case. Because I want to get rid of the media, because I will start growing this in self-watering as I do with all, uh, probably um, of basically all my plants. And I want to get rid of this stick that holds the flower spike. I may keep the flower spike on. It uh, will depend on the root system and how Easily this will acclimate to the self-watering, but I always, I try to keep it on because it's looking very healthy. We don't have uh, wiggling bulbs, um, so I think it's uh, good to go, but uh, we shall see. Sometimes I leave it on, the flower spike, and sometimes I take it off quite uh, straight away because of the, when an orchid doesn't have much roots, it's hard to... Uh, obtain the spike but maybe I will leave it on this time just have a look I see quite some uh, new root tips there so this is a beautiful time to uh, repot this one it has a moss block in there I think and some older roots so I try to tease it up make it loosely Looser, so I can uh, get my fingers in there. <laughs> I think it's that coconut husk stuff. This is my camera. It's almost uh, like an basic garden mud, plant mud, but so yeah, it's not my preferred media at all. We have new root tips on the older ones, so that's uh, once again beautiful. So I probably do not have to take off quite uh, a lot of roots of this uh, this one. We have some older roots here, so I try to pull them off. So I can reach that uh, moss plug. And try to get uh, rid of the moss. The roots are a bit tangled up here, so it's a bit hard, but there we go. It's a bit rough, but I have to get the moss out, because that will uh, give some trouble if I leave it in there. In the pots later on, it will start to rot. And I don't want uh, rotting stuff in my pots, of course, and especially when uh, we try to grow them in uh, inorganic. We want to have it clean because that's the nice thing of inorganic media. It will not start to rot, which I really, uh, really like. It makes it very easy on uh, up potting them. So I have to, if I have to repot this one, give it a bigger size pot. I just can. Take it out of the pot, put it in the next one, maybe cutting some old roots off if necessary. But that's it. So I nev to, never have to be as rough on this root system again. And that is what I really, really like. One of the things that I really like of self-watering.
and I'm checking the other roots. Yes, yeah, some I have to cut off. Not that much, I think. Here's this part. This one is dead as well. At least the, most of the parts. It's very dark as well. So this one was uh, going over already. And the rest I will uh, rinse under the tap. There's a little bit media inside there still. I try to uh, get everything out, but sometimes a few pieces of bark, just a few, is not that um, important to uh, take off. There were the lights going on. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I said, I try to get as much off as I can. So I will put it aside for just a second because I will take the other one out of the pot as well. But before I do that I will uh, sterilize my uh, scissors, for you never know. So I have my rubbing alcohol here. Let that uh, ev evaporate. So it's uh, sterilized again. And in the meanwhile, I can take this out of the spot. Beautiful orchid. It's really at the side of the, the pot and it's really started to, to uh, shrivel. So I think I'm going to have to cut a flower spike on this one. But just first, let's have a look. It's almost top heavy with a beautiful spike, yeah. I don't think these roots are looking very pro promising, to be honest. No, they are, these are dead. That's so sad. Okay. So I will uh, cut the flowers back now first. It's a very thick flower spike. Beautiful blooms. I will put them in a face so I can enjoy them a little bit longer. But um, yeah, it had to go because the roots aren't uh, alive anymore. At least not much of it. And that's why uh, it started to shrivel. So I really need to uh, do something about it. But I don't know. This is very, very wet. It's really, really wet, sadly. So the roots started to rot. Yeah, I don't think there will be many roots left that are alive. That's very sad because it's uh, now really set back. So I have to grow it on again, and that should be doable. But it may make another bulb, but it will not get the size of this one. I I think because of the setback, as you can see. It's really uh, development goes off very easily. So let's take them off. Well, actually, we have a good one there. I think so. I may leave that one on. Hopefully, it will uh, start to branch. But most of them. Are that sadly are not for this world anymore. Is it coconut husk again? And it holds so much water without any air circulation. So yeah, that's not not a very nice way to grow them, if you ask me. For nurseries, I think it's probably it's working great, but. <laughs> I do not have a nursery and I have I have a greenhouse and orchid room but yeah I cannot uh, grow them in this media sadly mm. 
<coughs> Let's have a look. These bulbs for berries. Not a good idea. Because they will start to rot. More rot in the pot. Not handy at all, of course. Which one is that? These are good. I'm still checking the roots. I try to keep a few on, like I said, but it's going too hard with this one. Because most of them are really gone. You can probably see this one is completely broken. And no point on leaving them on. Yeah, a few of them are still feeling quite firm, so I will let those stay there. Hopefully they will shoot out to make it a little bit easier for this orchid to recover. Hopefully. This one can go. That one. This one can go. Yeah. This in the front. Sadly. Or this. And a few other lights turned on. <laughs> Probably saw that. Yeah, normally I'm not this early, but I was very early. I didn't have any more sleep, so I thought, well, let's start working on these orchids because I do not have much time at the moment. So I thought, well, let's make this an early day <laughs> and try to work with them. So yeah, I'm probably gonna take these black bulbs off. They have do have no more roots and it will make it quite hard to put them up. As you can see, they are very low in comparison. So yeah, I'm going to take these off. These are dividing very easily as you can, as you can see. And I can just easily break them off. Yeah. I'm looking at the rhizome and I think I see some purple there. Um. Just on that end I just snipped off, I saw some purple, but this looks quite kind of clean to me, to be honest. So it's a bit strange. Um, let's grab my uh, clippers, I believe you can call them. And we'll take a little bit of this rhizome. A little bit more, just to check it. I hope you can see it. Yeah, I think you can. I'm going to cut off a little bit more of that rhizome to 
just to check No, not very clear, but I think there might be something, but it's not much. So hopefully, I hopefully this one is okay. It's not very visible, so probably it's okay. I don't know, but I will uh, put some uh, cinnamon on the wound later on. I will first. Put some hydrogen on there just to clean it up again. Sterilize the wound. Just taking a few roots off, who are still, uh, still not alive, <laughs> who are, who are still there and uh, are not alive. I try to, yeah. As you can see, we are losing quite a lot of roots, all dead roots. So they serve no purpose. So yeah, I think this is it for now. We have a few roots on there who hopefully start to shoot out again. That would be wonderful. So this arc doesn't have to start off from uh, stretch again. So it has a little bit of uh, help here from its older root system. That part is dead as well. Let's cut it out. Try to get a sheet off for any new worlds who will try to come out. Give them a little bit more room. I see some eyes, some potential there for new worlds. This one is dried up. Sadly, but who knows. I will keep an eye on this. So yeah, that's it for this one. I will uh, clean this up and then uh, on the, the tap and then I will uh, spray it with hydrogen peroxide and then we will come back and start putting them up and hopefully, like I said, this one will shoot out uh, many roots from the old system while it's working on a new growth with new roots. Hopefully. That's the plan. And a quick a little update on this one. This is my Pleuro Tollis. And it has some new roots. Just started. It was heavily packed on a moss. But I think it's kind of okay. Hopefully it will start, uh, yeah, continue to grow and grow on a bit more, get a bit more established in, in a new setup. But quite a lot of new growing tips. So I think we are just at a nice spot to do a repot on this one. And a quick update on my uh, yellow with red, no ID, I think auto glossum type. This one has quite a uh, nice root system, but because it's very shriveling, and working on a new growth, I decided to just take off the flower spike. And I'm talking about this one. Beautiful blooms. But um, yeah, I just want to go to give this a, uh, a setup where I can completely focus on the new growth. Like I said, it's, it's, it's still shriveling. So maybe a part just what the plant does. But anyhow, I, uh, I'm going to cut the spike. But this one uh, is very big. This spike it takes up a lot of energy. And I don't know what the roots will do. We have quite a lot of root tips, so that's beautiful. But we will see. I will now uh, clean this up under the tap and then uh, we will have an update on the last one. 
And here we have the last one for the day, this beautiful red No ID uh, Odontoglossum type. And this one has a beautiful root system. So I clean it up and I sprayed it with hydrogen. So it's sissing away. <laughs> but yeah, maybe, maybe I'm going to leave the flower spike. To be honest, I think the sunset will take it with a flower spike in this one. I don't think so, but you never know. It has a beautiful bulb. At this moment, it's very plump. But I have a feeling that this one will start to shrivel. So then I will cut a flower spike. But it has a beautiful root system. So I thought, yeah, just give it a try and we can do a follow up and see what happens. But uh, this is the last one uh, unpotted. So I will uh, clean up my mess and then I will be back and we will up pot them again. So, and here we are again. I have my inner pot, where the orchid will go in with the pumice in this case, and my outer pot is sitting here. And I will start off with the uh, sunset. And of course my water meters I have already set. So, I will place them first, the water meters, because this needs to reach the bottom, obviously. So this will give me later on an indication of how much water there is in the, in the reservoir of the pot. And I start off with the first layer of uh, pumice, so that the uh, roots who are already there will not go into the reservoir. Probably some branches will go in, but the uh, orchid has to decide itself if it wants to have fully uh, water roots or not. So therefore I place a little layer of uh, pumice first. Like this. And then we will place the orchid in a pot. And I try to keep as many room around the bulbs as I can, especially on the growing, on the front where the, probably the new bulbs will come from. This is the, uh, the newest bulb, so probably that will make some new bulbs in the future. Most likely it will. I need to bend these a little bit. No need for aerial roots for the Milto Miltonia. So I try to get all the roots inside the pot. And I need to turn it a little bit. Because my water meter is in an angle in a pot. And that's not okay because otherwise it, it will not work. So I have to straighten that up. And I did that, so I need to hold this with one hand and try to grab some media. Get that leaf out of the pot, don't want to bury that. So, and I'll fill up the pot with media. This is the large spammers and I will now grab some smaller spammers, because this is a an orchid that has finer roots, therefore I like to use the smaller pumice as well. To keep a little bit more moisture around the roots. I shake it so it will fall into place. And I lost their leaf. Could I have it again? with a top layer of bubbles, pebbles, bubbles, <laughs> pebbles. But before I do that, just a quick view. You can see that the orchid is a little bit in the angle. So therefore I have no media uh, around the older bulbs. Just here, this is uh, where it starts uh, the bulb showing up. And I will fill it uh, with pebbles around because pebbles are non-wicking and they do not hold moisture. If I would uh, put all uh, pumice around those older uh, pseudo bulbs, they probably will start to rot. So therefore I try to keep uh, it airy and as dry as possible. First a few here. And then some puddles like I said around the old bulbs. And a few there.
let me see if I can bury this root. This one will like likes to grow straight up, but I need that in a pot. I was talking about this root and the animal root. But I put some pebbles on top of it, on top of it, so I hope it will grow now uh, inside the pot. So that is it for this one. Let me show it to you guys. So once again I have pebbles here at the same height of that oldest bulb and then it goes uh, in an angle upwards. So we have more pumice here because the new growth will come there and probably will also a bit, uh, bit climbing. So the roots will touch the pumice, the, where the moisture is, uh, as quickly as possible. So let's put it in the kitchen counter and uh, grab the last one for this session. That was a beautiful yellow oncidium where I did cut the flower spike and I'm not completely sure if it's fusarium free but we will give this a try and see if it will grow on or start to regrow. Basically the same story. Um, for the Notonia. So I have my inner pot again. I did a tie wrap around it so I can get it easier out of the pot. Put my water meter in, hold it and place the first layer of pumice. And I need... where is it? There it is. This is uh, a knitting tool. I don't know how to call it, but it's used for knitting and it's a very cheap one and those are most of the times uh, hollow inside, so they are easy to cut and they are coated and this works, I use this uh, for years to put it in the pot and you can put flower spikes, uh, support flower spikes with it but also the growths without uh, many roots like uh, this one. So that's what I'm going to do, but this will not uh, start to uh, rust inside your pot. So. Uh, it keeps it nice and clean and it fits in a hole of the pot so it stands up for itself. It makes it a little bit easier. And now I need a bit of wire, which I didn't prepare. But I have everything around me. That's very handy of this orchid room. I have basically everything around me so I can grab it quite quickly. Most of the time, but sometimes I don't put it back where I normally have it, you know <laughs> how it goes. Then I have to search a little bit. But uh, anyhow, same story, I try to put this in the middle of the pot. I think a new growth will come from here, but you never know. So I th think I'm going to keep it uh, around the middle, like I said. And I will tie it first to the support. And that's to make it easier for new roots, so I don't break them if I grab this orchid from its pot or when there's a little bit of movement, the green points of the roots can break quite easily. So to prevent that, I stabilize it like this in a pot and I can move it up a little bit if I want, and, but I don't want it too high. There's also a little bit of a climber, so the next growth will come up and it needs to be very, fairly close to the media. So let's grab some pumice again. Bigger pumice, now some smaller. Beautiful small pumice, I hope you can see it. Very, very handy with small rooted uh, orchids. I really love this stuff. And I, you can mix it quite easily if you are a little bit in between or you want to give your orchid roots a little bit more air. Like I do, I just mix it, the both of them. And my Oncidiums and Notonias really like this setup. I finally found out after uh, quite some years. <laughs> but it works. For me at least, in my, uh, my climate and my uh, growing conditions.
just a little bit there. You never know, maybe a new girl will start from this bulb. So it needs some pumice. This one is highly likely. This is the oldest one, so I will fill this up completely with uh, uh, pebbles. Just uh, to uh, prevent it from rotting. It all, whoops! This older bulb. And the top layer on the front, which I personally like the look of. I really enjoy it. But I like uh, pebbles, as you may know by now. And it works. It's an idea from Annabelle from the Orchid Room. And I uh, tried it and I really like it. It really helps to prevent a top dry layer, especially in summer. So it keeps quite some moisture around the roots, which we want, obviously. So, yeah, for me it works uh, wonders, I must admit. So, I will now put it uh, above the sink as well and we will give it a, a rinse. And I just prepared some RO water with only some seaweed in it. And uh, that uh, is the flush uh, that I use. So I keep it moisture in there and some seaweed in there, some hormones, and that's it. I don't start filling up the reservoir yet until I really see the roots growing again. But uh, yeah, so I just give them a last flush for the day. And like I said, some moisture. Filling up the pot with some growing hormones, at least that's the idea. And that's it, and now uh, we're gonna find a nice suitable place for them. Oh, and before I do that, obviously I will uh, write a tag and then uh, I, uh, we will uh, we'll find a nice space for them. So I think I found a nice spot here on the floor uh, for the orchids. And this is because they will receive a little bit of daylight. From the light coming in from that window but more they will uh, receive some uh, artificial light from these lamps around them so it's a bit softer light and i think that's a very important especially when you are repotting orchids or orchids without uh, any roots you don't want to stress them too much without giving them too much light or too less too less can also be uh, very difficult for them to grow, so you need something to in between. I call this very soft light because of the uh, artificial lab uh, tubes. They are not very too strong, but they give a nice, uh, a st uh, strong in, uh, in uh, let's say, a real sunlight would be way too strong. So that's beautiful, I think. And it's very easy for me because I'm daily here, so I can. Uh, uh, get them out of the outer pot and just have a look at the root system because as soon as they start to grow I will fill up the reservoirs and then they will get their uh, real home <laughs> then I can put them in uh, in a greenhouse or this red one for example will stay in my orchid room I have here my Miltoniopsis and also my Odotoglossum types but my Miltonias uh, like to have a little bit more light so that one will be uh, in my greenhouse hopefully within a few weeks but uh, yeah like i said uh, it's a nice uh, nice area i think to get them started so uh, and it also gives them name tags and or a number for the no id so i have something uh, that i can rely on uh, for my notes so that's all said and done so for now it's just uh, Keep them moist, not wet, just moist and hope for uh, new roots very soon. And also, like I said, uh, we will keep an eye on the flower spikes. If the bulb starts to shrivel, then I will cut the spikes off immediately. But these, both of them have quite some roots, uh, some beautiful root systems, so maybe. And it's just a feeling, but I think this red one will uh, start to shrivel up and probably the sunset will take uh, the repotting um, even uh, in flowers, but it's just a feeling. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, uh, uh, but we will see in the future. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching. And as usual, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And of course, I hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye-bye.